So, and I think it's really easy to say like winning is like how I'm going to measure my success because winning is so measurable. It's like, it's either Italian one column or Italian the other column. Like it's really easy to look back at a season and be like, like for football, for example, this season we were seven and two, right? And you look at that and you'd be like, we had a bad season. Seven I don't and two. Or two and seven. Two and seven. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that yeah, no, really no, good. yeah, no. We did not go <laughs> seven and two. I wish we did, but um, but you can look at like the numbers, right? And even like for me this weekend, I went three and two. But if you really unpack that, right, the two losses I had, one of them I should have won. I just made a stupid mistake, or I wasn't wrestling smart enough. I had a really great first period. The second period, I just kind of fell apart. And my other match, I wrestled really tough. You know, he was a kid who was bigger than me. He was stronger than me. Um, but the numbers are so rarely a reflection of how it actually went, which is why I don't like to think about a record as being like your defining success. Right. I heard this concept called a hidden versus observable metrics. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I was hearing it in the context of like making money that people tend to observe like hidden metrics are often very important, but this, since there's no way to track them, we kind of just forget about them because our mind tends to fix it on things like numbers that we can track. Right. Mm-hmm. So we get so obsessed with things like the numbers on my bank account. So you'll prioritize that because it's a measurable metric. So you can define your success on it and you'll like sacrifice like your, your health and your relationships mm-hmm. and everything else. Cause it's not easy to track that. Like it's not easy to track like how well is your relationship going with your kids, right? Yeah. You can't really track that, but you can track the number, like the money in your bank account. Right. Mm-hmm. I think it's very, like, you have to be careful, right. That we can't sacrifice these elements, like peace of mind, mm-hmm. which is a very hidden metric. How the fuck do you measure peace of mind yeah. right? for a very observable metric? Like, okay, how successful am I? How many wins do I have? How many mm. friends do I have? Like, yeah. how much like, money do I have, right? Mm. And then we tend to fix out of things that are less important than the real things that are important, which are often the hidden metrics. Yeah, so. and I think a really great example of that is academics, um, especially at a school like Petty, because I think kids will so often focus entirely on the observable metrics and they'll be like, this letter grade defines me or getting this grade on a final or even just a test or even a quiz, like that defines me. And I think there's so many aspects of life that so many people, and it's not just here, it's everywhere, but people will look over to try to make those observable metrics better. And I think in terms of like the college process, when you're looking at only the observable metrics, it's crazy. It's hard. Because that's what matters in college, right? I know, because they don't see your day-to-day life. Like you're not holding a camera as you have these conversations with people. Exactly. (laughs) Because they're they're not seeing like – the way that you interact with your teachers, whether it be positive or negative, like those things that actually define you and will define the way that you go on for college and the rest of your life. Like it's, it's really the thing that one of my pet peeves is like when I see kids who just only focus on school or even like will only focus on athletics. Like I think there's so many hidden metrics in life that are just looked right over because they're trying to reach something, you know, like people will stay up to like three in the morning doing work. Like why? (laughs) Yeah. Like why just to like get a hundred on a homework assignment or to get a 96 as opposed to like a 92 on a test, like trying to make those observable metrics higher to such a detriment to those hidden metrics. Like it just, it's never made sense to me. And it's always been so I feel bad for those people. Right. Which is what we talked about like before with like, these people haven't been raised or haven't learned how to be like, it's fine if I don't have an A plus and I accept an A minus for the fact that I'm going to go and I'm going to have fun or I'm going to go to the diner with my friends this Friday night. And it's hard. And it's really easy to say that now because I bet you in a week when I have five tests that last week of inner winter and I'm going to be like, well, I can't go out. I got to go do work. Yeah, we're we're, but, we're, we're victim to it too. Obviously. Exactly. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's a victim to it. I think I've really prioritized being better at it and focusing on those hidden metrics much more than the observed metrics. But I really think that like in order to be like a well-rounded person, and like I said, it's hard because colleges can't see the hidden metrics, right? But then again, college itself is an observable yeah, metric exactly. as you. Because yeah. it's like, I want to go to Princeton. I want to go to Dartmouth. I want to go to UPenn. But there's also like great colleges that you don't even know the name of, yeah. right? Or you'll just have as much fun. Or maybe you'll go to those really high colleges if you're lucky enough and you'll hate it there, right? Because you're just hitting those observable metrics, exactly. but the hidden metrics are gone. The people at top schools are depressed. I yeah. agree. Yeah. I mean, even here, like this is a top school and people are depressed here. <laughs> and it's because 
it's because they aren't able to focus on the hidden metrics, yeah. right? And I think it's it's been a personal goal of mine to focus on them. If you enjoyed that segment with Connor Palzak, then you're gonna love the full one and a half hour length podcast that I filmed with him. Hit the link in the description now to see the full length podcast.